Your hosts have earned a reputation as fierce and effective advocates inside and outside of the courtroom. Our partners are experienced trial attorneys who have been board certified in family law by the Texas Board of Legal Specialization. Thanks for tuning into For Better, Worse, or Divorce podcast. This is where we provide you tips and insight on how to navigate divorce and child custody situations in the state of Texas. This is Jake Gilbreth, and today I'm joined by Sarah Gilbreth. You all know from previous episodes, Sarah is both my wife uh, and CEO of the law firm and mother to my children and also a stepmom, uh, which has to do with our topic today. And we're excited today to be joined by Jamie Scrimger, who is... Uh, the host of the podcast, Kick-Ass Stepmom Podcast, the Kick-Ass Stepmom Podcast. Uh, she's a stepmom life coach, a digital content creator as well, um, and she's a wife and stepmom to three and mother of one. So, Jamie, welcome, and thanks for being here today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. And, of course, Sarah, thanks for being here as well. Jamie, I want to sort of jump right in. I told y'all before we started recording that I'll, you know, I'm not the, I'm the one that's not the step parent on the, uh, on the podcast, uh, today. And I know that y'all have a very hard job. Uh, and so I want to sort of ask y'all some questions. So, but first, Jamie, I want to sort of talk about the work that you do. Uh, what motivated you to start your step parent community and coaching? Well, basically there was a need for it. So I have been a stepmom for 11 years now. And when my husband and I first got together, so I was 26 years old. We had a 13 year age difference. He had three kids and an ex-wife. And it was really interesting because I had worked in child protection. I had worked with so many families who were dealing with co-parenting issues, that kind of stuff. So having that background, I kind of felt like I knew what I was signing up for. But then when I became a stepmom myself, I realized that it was very different the way that it feels on the inside. So basically, I kind of had a breakdown. I was looking for support, didn't know if I could handle it, didn't know what was next for me. And when I went to the internet for support, I was really, really disappointed. And it's still very true to this day, which is kind of sad, but there's not a lot of support out there for stepmoms. You know, moms are really encouraged to keep it real. They're encouraged to be raw and open about the motherhood experience. Like there's been a huge shift in the conversation and that hasn't been true for, for stepmoms. Stepmoms are still very much judged for everything actually. Right. And there's such a double standard. And so when I was going through the support online, I realized a, there's a lack of it. And B, there was a lot of negativity around the stepmom role. And so a lot of, you know, stepmoms spending a lot of time on these forums and chats, just talking negatively about the ex, venting, all of the things. And I was just like, okay, that's not going to help anything. I'm looking for solutions. Like, how do I improve this situation? How do we do better? How do I feel more in control? How do I find my role in this, in this space? And. So it was kind of that day where I was like, okay, well, I guess I'm going to have to figure this out on my own. And I really dove into this journey of personal development, you know, communication with my husband, really opening the the conversation with him. That was really huge. And eventually I just started a blog and I didn't think anyone would read it. I was home with our daughter at the time and I was still maternity leave. And I just kind of started this blog because I was kind of bored and never really thought anyone was going to read it. You know, Google is a beautiful thing. All of a sudden I had stepmoms from all over the world reaching out saying, wow, I am so happy that you're saying this. I feel so seen. I'm afraid to say this. I can't believe you're, you know, feeling the same way as me. I've always felt like I was so alone. I have so much guilt for how I'm feeling. And so it really did start this just Instagram page and blog. And then I started to get stepmoms say to me, well, I want to comment on your post, but I'm scared the ex is going to see it. Or I'm scared that my mother-in-law is going to know that I'm struggling, or I don't want anyone to know what's going on. So that's why I ended up starting my membership space, which is the Kick-Ass Stepmom community. And it is a space where you get coaching and support and there's raw and real conversations. And it's entirely off of social media. So basically just this safe space for stepmoms to go, you know, learn tips and strategies. I provide that solution focused support that I was looking for. I bring in experts and then we have a chat room where we really try to keep it real and honest, but positive, right? So instead of venting and going off on these tangents and these rants, it's like, okay, here's what's happening. Here's how I'm feeling. Okay. What do I do to rectify the situation? How can I improve the situation? So very solution focused. 
Love that background. That's that's such a great story. You mentioned people judging you yourself as a stepmom. It's interesting that you say that because I, I know, and Sarah, I want to get your thoughts on this, obviously. But um, I mean, from the perspective of the outside looking in, it feels, you know, it's not a step parent seeing what y'all go through. It, it always, and I know, Sarah, you've expressed this, it always feels like everybody's graying your paper, right? Um, and you're almost sort of constantly looking over your shoulder. If, am I striking the right balance? Uh, you know, as a family lawyer, I even see it. In the courtroom, right? Somebody complains, well, stepmom's too involved. Stepmom's not involved enough. Stepmom chimed in and she shouldn't chime in or she should have chimed in here or she should have done this or that. Um, and there's not really a set of rules of kind of how it's supposed to be other than whenever we, uh, all sort of swoop in and criticize, um, mm-hmm. what, what y'all do. So I guess on that, Sarah, kind of what's, I, I mean, for those who are just now listening for the first time, I guess what's your background as a stepmom and kind of your thought, your experience and thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I agree with everything Jamie said. And I think um, to her point and what she spends a lot of time in her community talking about being solution oriented. I mean, I do think it's great for um, step parents and everyone to be able to be vulnerable and talk about their experiences and share those because you're right, there's not a space for that. And I think As the outsider, as the step parent, you often feel like if I complain at all or even just vocalize a situation that I'm in, it means either I don't want to be here and I'm doing a bad job or, you know, well, you knew what you were getting into. You signed up for this. You know, you hear that a lot, too. Um, And so giving people that space and that room to to talk about what's going on, but then shifting really the narrative. Right. I think is so important. Um, and having ownership. And I know one thing you talk a lot about is just controlling like what goes on in you and in your household and what you want your experience to be within your home. And so that's in your family. So that's something that really resonates with me. But back to the point Jake was making, I think that most step parents feel that pull of do more, but do less, be smaller, but show up and do everything drop your life. You need to do everything for this, you know, kid that's not yours. You're not a parent. It's not yours, but also you make sure that you do everything and do it in the right way, except don't do too much, but do a little bit less, but do more. And so you can kind of feel like, whoa, where is my place in this? And what role do I have? And I know one thing you talk a lot about, um, in your community and on your podcast that I want to touch on today is just really identifying within your family structure, within your own step parent role, what are the boundaries going to be and, and having some flexibility with that, right? Like it's okay to say I was all in, in the start and things have changed. And now I need you to kind of pick up this area. Um, and so in my own experience, that's one thing I've struggled with is just knowing um, what my role should be and could be and balancing like what I think to be right and what I think my role to be within our family structure and what the expectation is, um, not just within our family, um, an extended family, but also society, right? I think there's a lot of pressure um, to pit women against each other. And that's like the automatic narrative is like, oh, the mom and the stepmom hate each other or shouldn't get along. And, and so I think just kind of thinking through all those dynamics is something that you do a really good job of. Thank you. You're welcome. So on that, yeah, on that, Jamie, so what are some of the challenges that either you personally experience or or, or a lot of your followers experience kind of coming into that role as as, a stepmom? Mm -hmm. Well, I think it is. It's just finding your place. And the big thing is, is to know that what works for one step family is is not going to work for another. Right. So you got to figure out what's going to work for you. And that can get really difficult when you have that noise coming in from from society. Right. So. You know, Sarah really touched on this, but you really are damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. So you go all in and you're overstepping. You don't do enough, then you resent the kids for being around. And there's just this good enough until you're not feeling. So it's like a lot of stepmoms feel good enough for the pickup and for the drop off, for the homework and for the shopping and for the laundry and for all the things. But then when those glory moments of parenting come in, it's you need to back up and you need to know your place. And you know, as a mom myself, rightfully so, there are things that, I, you know, if Darren and I were to split, I would be like, mm, okay, that would be my role. Thank you so much. Right. Mm-hmm. And so there's a lot of empathy that needs to take place as well. So it's, it's hard. It's tricky. You're navigating the ex who may be struggling with accepting 
you know, that her marriage didn't work out and grieving the life she thought she'd had. And maybe she even wanted the separation. Maybe she wanted the divorce, but then she sees this other woman, you know, having this happy relationship with her husband. And she's like, why couldn't we have that? So there's a lot of grief and there's hurt and like all the things going on. So it, it's hard, right? It's just hard to figure out your place and what works for you and your family. But I always come back to these questions and this is what I want stepmoms to ask themselves all the time. And I've asked myself these, these questions several times throughout the last, you know, 11, 12 years. And my answers change because your step family life is going to change and where the exes is going to change and where your step kids are at is going to change. It's, is what I'm doing working? Like, is it working? So is your role in discipline working? Is your role with the communicating with the ex working or is it not working right now? Mm -hmm. And is it impacting your ability to show up? Right. It's impacting your ability to show up for your family. There was times at the very beginning where I was so consumed. You guys know you, you have clients who are, you know, getting the lawyer's letters and there's the allegations and there's the things. And we would get a lawyer's letter and my husband would be able to go back to work and focus. And I was consumed. I couldn't think of anything else. So I'm all in. I'm looking up the precedent setting cases. I'm documenting things. I'm telling him like what our next steps are. Like you just get so consumed by it. And that's a situation. Like is what I'm doing working? No, right? This is, this is impacting my ability to show up right now. I need to take a step back. So there's so many different situations where, where, you know, those questions can really steer you in the right direction and help you find your role. But that's what stepmoms are struggling with. They're like, what is my role here? Well, how's that work? You know, is I guess both of y'all want to hear your perspective on this and having that honest conversation with your partner, right? That, um, I mean, I see it with Sarah. Uh, I'll just say, I don't think she minds me sharing. Like whenever there's that struggle or you put in the, you know, you, you feel like everybody's looking over your shoulder or what have you. I, you know, from what, from what I see, it's, it's hard to come to me, right? I assume it's hard to come to your spouse and say, this, this sucks. Right? This is not fun. Um, this is what I'm dealing with, or this is, it, you know, cause you're trying to please everybody who would have, who would have known like really good moms are sitting there trying to please everyone. Um, but it's what y'all do. Um, uh, and that includes your, um, you know, your current spouse, right. That's, uh, you know, from his perspective, he's dealing, you know, he's dealing with the ex, he has you and stuff. And then I know y'all are trying to, you know, make everybody happy. So how do you, is that something that you talk about with your listeners, Jamie? It's just how to also not just navigate the relationship with the kids and the ex, but also their, uh, their spouse and dealing with all this. Yeah. I actually have a workshop in the membership where I, I walk stepmoms through just tips and strategies on how to communicate with your partner about your step family stress, because sometimes we forget what our partner's going through, right? It's like you said, they're balancing the X. They're trying to make sure their kids are happy. They have a little bit of divorce guilt or dad guilt or, you know, guilt for moving on. Um, they are a lot of times the fathers have the financial responsibility. They're dealing with that burden. So then they have, you know, the stepmom being like, why don't you stand up for us? And, you know, something my husband used to say to me is like, cause you don't want to poke the bear. Like I bring up this issue, then it could you know, spiral into so many other issues, right? Like we have to pick our battles here. And um, so communicating is, is huge. And I think often when we go to communicate with our, our partners about how we're feeling, we just want them to agree with how we're feeling. We want them to see our side. We, we actually just want them to say what we're saying, right? You know, that, that's, that's the goal. We always say we want to communicate better, but it's, I know I just want you to agree with what I'm saying. And, you know, I realized very early on understanding Darren's perspective. So Darren's my husband, that was huge. So getting really curious about what's motivating the other person's behavior will literally change the game. So how are you feeling about this? Or when your partner responds in a way that you don't agree with, or maybe they don't want to set some boundaries, maybe they don't want to respond, or maybe they're letting their kid get away with something that you think there needs to be something done about just asking why. Like, I just want to understand why you think this is the best course of action and attempting to understand their perspective sets the tone for them to understand yours as well. A big thing that I, I have always said in my relationship and I encourage other stepmoms to say is I don't need you to agree with how I'm feeling right now. I just need you to respect that this is how I'm experiencing things. So we don't need to see things the exact same way. We just need to respect the other person's experience. And so, yeah, I provide a lot of support about the communication piece because that can be really hard. I have stepmoms say all the time, my, my husband doesn't understand. 
well, your husband is never going to understand what it's like to be a stepmom. First of all, he's a man. You got, we all think differently, right? Like they're, it's different. We are women. We are a lot of our value in our society is based on our ability to care for and nurture, right? And when don't really know how to care and nurture for these kids because you're not sure what your role is and you're being told all of these conflicting things, it's a very difficult thing. And then when you feel like an outsider, all the things, right? So your husband's never going to understand that. And you're never going to understand exactly how they feel in that situation either. And I think recognizing that, that's why you got to find your, your stepmom friends because you know, your, your partner can't give you all of the support in that area. Yeah, I agree. And one thing I've really tried to focus on in my own work is kind of stepping back a little bit and making it less about like the ex is doing this or the step kid is doing this. And to your point, Jamie, really making it, bringing it back to me, right? Like, here's what I'm experiencing. Here's how the situation is impacting me. Here's how I feel. And here's what I think would help or would make me feel better, or here's what I need to understand. Right. And so a lot of the work that I do, um, and I'm curious what you think about that, Jamie, but is really not making it about, like you say, all the noise and everything else that's going on, but really trying to think about within myself, like, how is this making me feel? And is it really an issue, right? Like, is it really impacting me or is it just something that I want to win on, or I want to make a point, or I want to say, like, I told you so, right? Like, is it really something that is impacting me and that I have feelings about that I need to express? Or is it like, just let it go? It doesn't matter. Yeah. You you got to check your ego, right? (laughs) Man, (laughs) I look back on some of the emails that like, so my relationship with my husband's ex has been really interesting. So we've had wine together. We've had mutual friends. We've gone out together. We've had words. We've gotten arguments over a $15 volleyball. Like, you know, right now I'm supporting her and some stuff she's going on with. There's been times where I'm like, I can't talk to, I I didn't talk to her for a couple of years because I needed to disengage. Like it really has been this ebb and flow relationship based on where we're all at in our life at that time. Right. And I think you know, you just got to wave the white flag sometimes. Be like, you know, silence is the best last word sometimes. Right. We don't need to be right. We don't need to win. Sometimes you just got to be like, okay, does this really matter? And, you know, I, I'm sure you guys can look back on things that felt like they really mattered in that moment. And then, you know, a few years down the road, you're like, that was stupid. No, it didn't. It was my ego. It doesn't totally. really matter that much. And a big thing that I really focus on with stepmoms is like, what is this about for you? Because we all have our fears and our insecurities, our attachment styles, like all the things, right? And we come, we bring this into our, our relationships. So for me, you know, with my childhood, I had a bit of an abandonment wound. I had a worthiness wound. I felt like I was never good enough. Someone was going to leave me. Okay. That, that's the story that I've, I've gone into everything with. And I think it's really important to do the work on yourself and figure that out. So I come in, I'm obviously going to feel like an outsider. I'm obviously going to feel like I'm not. I'm not wanted or needed and, and try to kind of compensate for that. And so when we have these stories, we're looking for proof, right? right? You're looking for proof to confirm the story that you're telling yourself. So right. for example, when my husband doesn't respond to the ex in the way that I think he should, I'm like, I don't matter. She matters more than me. I'm an outsider. I, no, he's actually trying to protect our family because he doesn't want this to become a bigger issue than it needs to be. Right. So like what's actually happening? Mm -hmm. You know, I go back to, there's a story. My husband would have movie nights with the kids in the basement. And I always felt super left out. I actually didn't even want to go to the movie night in the basement either. Like they watch horror movies. I don't like horror movies. I didn't want to go at all. And he'd be like, okay, I'm going to go watch a movie with the kids in the basement. And I'd feel like an outsider. I'd feel like I didn't matter. Felt Mm -hmm. like I didn't belong. And when I told him this, he says, you were always welcome to go to the movie. I thought you wanted space. I was trying to give you some alone time so that you can just kind of like do you and take care of you. You were always welcome. So we come up with these assumptions, right? right? Assumptions about the ex, assumptions about our partner, all of these things. So that's why, again, it goes back to that communication piece. We're all just looking for confirmation on the stories we're telling ourselves. And when you're telling yourself a lot of really bad stories about the ex, you're going to find proof. So how, dealing with that dynamic with the ex, Jamie, and I guess uh, Sarah as well. I mean, are, do you, is it a spectrum or do you have you know, some moms that are just besties with their husband's ex and then other moms that are just maybe at no fault of their own, just absolute war with the ex. And, you know, I assume 
any any way the relationship it is, it's going to present challenges. But how do you help people navigate? Um, you know, those relationships, particularly if it's a high conflict relationship, it may not be stepmom's fault at all. Um, and it's a high conflict, um, relationship. How do you help your, your followers navigate through that? Yeah, I do a lot of work on boundaries and disengaging. And again, going back to those questions that I was saying, like, is what I'm doing working? Cause a lot of stepmoms come in, we have this idea of how things are going to be. And, you know, for like my situation, I really thought we were going to have this really great, amazing co-parenting relationship. I wanted the matching jerseys. I wanted all of the things. And so there's almost like a grief process that happens to happen when you're in those high conflict situations where you're like, okay, this person is not going to have this type of relationship with me. Like this is never going to happen. So you're, you're grieving that, right? You really want that. And uh, just accepting what is, what is in your, like, what is the truth about your situation? And so, yeah, the disengaging piece, I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of content out there for stepmoms on disengaging. So there's a platform and it's, it's the not show, not show kid mentality. So not your kid, not your problem, not your kid, not your responsibility. And I'm like, okay, I get it. But it very much feels like my problem. Right. <laughs> like I'm in yeah. the house, house. I'm dealing with it all. <laughs> We're all married. I'm married to this man. Like this is very much my problem. So right. I'm not really into that whole just kind of disengaging because I think you can disengage without disconnecting. So again, what's your answer to that question is what I'm doing working. So there are times when as a stepmom, I've been all in, right? I've been all in doing all the things I participated in, you know, discipline and direction with the kids. And then I got to the point where I was like, "Mm, you know, teenagers, it's a new ball game, took a step back. There was a time I was all in with the ex, wasn't really working at that in that season of our lives, took a step back. And so that's what I really support stepmoms in doing is like setting those boundaries, thinking about those rules of engagement and going back to like, what is best for my family right now? Not how I think it should be, not how I think I should be treated, not what everyone else is doing. I'm not going to sit around waiting like for them to change because it's not an effective strategy. It doesn't work. But like, what's best for my family right now? And how can we all feel like our own, our needs are being met in that place? You know, for me, I guess I want to ask both y'all too. Um, just again from the, from the outside looking in, it seems to me like a huge challenge parenting, particularly when you have you know blended family, and then you have your own children with your with your partner, right? So you're raising multiple children, but not all. I mean, maybe the same in your household, but you know, let's say you have a fifty fifty. Let's say it's you have you know two children with your current spouse. And then your stepmom to an older child, maybe that child sits in your household 50% of the time. And so the other 50% of the time, he or she's being parented probably differently than you would parent your kids. And that child's coming back into your household um, with those, you know, just being exposed to different styles of parenting, maybe good, maybe, maybe bad, maybe in between. But then trying to get that kind of... <laughs> I guess almost with synthesis when we all get back to, together in the same household, but I've got one child that's only here half the time and, and is just raised differently half his time or half her time. So what's, you know, what are those challenges like dealing with blending the, the, the siblings? Yeah. Yeah. I've really just been like, Reese is going to be raised differently than they are. And, you know, she has an age difference with them. You know, my youngest stepson is 17 now and Reese is nine. So it, we don't run into the age difference thing, like, or when they're the same age, but you know, for this is little, but for example, we went to McDonald's the other day and, uh, when a big trigger with me has always been like how much pop the kids were allowed to drink. Like it just is like, it drives me nuts. And, uh, so we went to McDonald's and, you know, Zach ordered a pop or fruitopia or whatever. And with his McDonald's and Reese or Reese has water. Like that's the, like she, she's not, she's, she's my kid. I get to decide. Right. And so, and I, and I know that's just like a silly example, but we're just really open and honest about how they're not going to be raised the same way. And I think a lot of stepmoms have the expectation that it can and will be, or should be the same way. And you got to have those open and honest conversations with them when, you know, maybe your stepchild is allowed to get away with something they're not. And it's like, they have this mom and dad, we have this mom and dad here. This may not feel fair, um, but welcome to life. (laughs) It's not fair. Right. And just, just having really age appropriate conversations about it and understanding there's going to be that transition period too. Right. So when they come back, when the kids were young and they come back to, to, 
three days in, it could still take a little bit of time to everyone kind of get on, get into our routine. And then you get into the routine and then they leave again. And it's hard, right? But having realistic expectations and also empathy for the kids to know like, man, that's a lot to be, you know, going back and forth all the time as well. So just giving them a little grace. Yeah. I mean, that's one thing <clears throat> that we do in our household. I think a lot of people try to minimize the differences in terms of the conversations they're having, deny them. We don't want to talk about what goes on in the other house. We don't want to talk about how our house is different. And I think what's worked for us is going, yeah, you're right. It is different when you're at your mom's and here's how it is here. And here's why. And it is what it is, right? And I think that makes it easier for all the kids involved. Now, our kids are closer in age. They're all three years apart. Um, and so we do see some of those things come up, like your example with McDonald's, right? Like, I'm I'm that mom, too. My kids have never seen or know what a soda is, right? Like, And that's how it's going to be in my house, period, end of story. Um, my stepkid probably has a different experience at his other household, and that's fine, too. But really being open to your point and talking about those differences. And one thing I've tried to do with all of our kids is talk about why things can be different, not just using our lifestyle as an example, but just talking through like I had a conversation with um, my stepson recently. He was asking about why his mom and dad lived far apart. We live in the same city, but far apart. And, um, you know, I told him like, hey, bud, here's this thing. When I was a kid, I thought there was only one right answer to a question. And I've learned now that I'm an adult that there can be many right answers to the same question. So here's our values and here's how we made this particular decision. But you can ask your mom. I bet she had a different set of questions that she asked and different answers. And that's how she made her decision. And they're both the right answer and they're both okay. Right. And so navigating that rather than shying away from it or telling him what I think her answer would be like just saying like, yep, you're right. And here's how we make our decisions too. Here's our values and bringing, you know, I try to bring everything in our household back to really our values and what is important to us as a family and using that framework to make all the smaller decisions that kind of follow that. And that's just how I've navigated explaining that to, to our kids. Yeah, I love that. Well, those are all, you know, lots of challenges and lots of really helpful advice from both of y'all. I mean, it being a legal family law podcast, let me just... Chime in just briefly because we did have a, a listener question about step parents' rights um, in the state of Texas, uh, and you know, on the issue of how challenging it is to uh, to step parents, uh, the frank answer is only step parents don't have legal rights except for in very very limited circumstances. Um, there was recently a Texas Supreme Court case, um, uh, in Ray, in Ray uh, C J C. Uh, make sure I got that right. Um, but the, you know, essentially the issue went up, uh, on, on appeal where unfortunately, um, the child, the parents are divorced, dad, uh, mom gets remarried to so the stepdad, um, involved in the child's life and then, you know, substantially involved in the child's life and then bi biological mom passes away in a car accident and then sort of stepdad's there. With this child, um, that is his child, stepchild, but is his child as well that's been in his life. And then what legal standing does he have? Um, and the unfortunate answer for the Supreme Court is in that situation is he did it, right? Um, that ultimately the parent gets to make the decision, uh, the surviving parent, that being dad in that situation, um, make the decision about whether or not stepdad's going to continue to have a role. And of course, it would be the same if the genders were reversed. There are very limited circumstances where a non parent um, would have, particularly a step parent, would have any type of standing. A lot of them would have to do if the, they raise a the child by themselves for, for a period of time. Um, but in most situations, that is, uh, you know, y'all are sit there left without a legal recourse. Um, and then on top of all the challenges, right? And I'm sure there's that fear of you know, what happens, right? What happens if uh, my spouse passes away? What happens if uh, he and I get divorced? Um, so not to just pile on as far as the other challenges that y'all y'all deal with, but it is something that we get a lot of legal questions on that. Um, and, and there's not a legal solution a lot of times. It's just a family dynamic uh, solution to it. But, you know, sort of wrap up because, you know, Jamie, there's a lot of resources out there. Um, 
that that come from you? Can you sort of tell us all how to you know how best to find you? What resources you would point all our listeners to, and um, if they want to follow you, where to find the podcast, and those sorts of things. Yeah, for sure. So you can find the podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. So the Kick-Ass Stepmom podcast. And then I also have my membership, which is the Kick-Ass Stepmom community and all of my resources over on jamiescrimger.com. G-E-O-U-R is how you spell the last name. Um, but yeah, you can, you know, the, the thing is, is when I, when I was trying to create the podcast and the membership and all that, I was like, what am I going to name this thing? Right. And so people hear like, Oh, kick-ass stepmom. Like she thinks she's like a kick-ass stepmom. I was like, no, I'm a very human person here. We're all just kind of doing the best we can with what we have. But I, I thought, okay, what do I want for the people who follow me? What do I want for the stepmoms in my community? And what do I want for myself? And it's like, I want to live a kick-ass life. Like that's what I want. And I want to learn how to thrive amongst the tough stuff. And so that's kind of what my mission is, is, you know, I'm not going to change your step family situation. I'm not going to change the X, but I want to, you know, just teach you some tips and strategies to help you feel like you have more control in our living, you know, aligned life amongst all of that tough stuff. So that's where the kick-ass step mom piece comes from. But yeah, that's where you can find me. Love it. That, that is great resources. And we appreciate you sharing that with us today. And we hope that all our listeners uh, find you online and, and listen to the podcast. Uh, I know we will be. Um, but that's what we have for today. So again, Jamie, we can't thank you enough for taking the time yeah, to join us. Um, we're going to put links to your website, Instagram and podcast in the podcast description. If you'd like to uh, check out everything she has to offer. For us, as y'all know, uh, we love feedback and reviews, particularly when it helps us improve the podcast. You can find us on our website. You can reach out to us at podcast at waltersgilbreth.com. Thanks, everybody, for listening, and we'll see y'all next time. For information about the topics covered in today's episode and more, you can visit our website at waltersgilbreth.com. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode of For Better, Worse, or Divorce, where we post new episodes every first and third Wednesday. Do you have a topic you want discussed or a question for our hosts? Email us at podcast at waltersgilbreth.com. Thanks for listening. Until next time.